Destiny and ABBA finally got around to reacting to the Just Pearly Things drama. Now, Destiny started off reacting to Syra Garvey's Pearl's ex-employee, his exposed video on Pearl. Now, the first issue that Destiny had with the Syra Garvey's video on Pearl is when Syra Garvey says that Pearl has a colonial mindset. So I began working with Pearl and from the beginning, I started to think that maybe this girl has a colonial mindset. Now, we all know that we don't want to be paranoid. Jesus. So I kept working with her. Colonial. However, the more I worked <laughs> with her is the more that I saw. She had a... It's like, there are so many good reasons to attack Pearl. Pearl, if you watch this video, I'm not defending you. F*** you, okay? You f*** piece of shit, okay? Now, apparently Destiny and Pearl is beefing, and I don't even know why they're beefing. I can't even recall. He told Pearl, F you, use a piece of ish. Now, let me find out that Destiny is like on the woke pro-black train, bro. If I find out that Destiny is a hotep, I'll lose my mind. Because Destiny is saying, your Pearl's a piece of ish. Apparently, Destiny is taking issue with what Pearl said about the slavery comment. That's what I'm getting from this. There are so many good reasons to attack Pearl, ideologically. But like, <laughs> the colonialist? <laughs> Bruv. Get me the f out of here, please. Get, get me out of this world. Colonialism, that's really the, that's the avenue we're taking. Destiny did say he don't want to defend Pearl and he said F Pearl, but it seemed as if he was defending Pearl really early on because when Syra Garvey was speaking about Pearl and her utilization of Africans and how that was wrong, Destiny kind of called him out for now being virtuous and trying to stand on this moral high ground when he didn't call her out before. So Pearl has taken people on from Africa, which on the surface looks like a good thing. And I guess it is. Africans are being fed. They're taking money from her. They are feeding their family. Amazing. However, with a colonial mindset, this can be quite dangerous. I, you know what? I don't like it when these guys like will get all high and mighty over these racial issues because it's like super convenient right now to do it. How long was this guy working with Pearl? I've been in her studio. I've talked to her. I know that she's hired all these people. Why is he waiting until now to say something? Why, why did you wait until now to bring this out? Now that she had Fuentes, now that all the drama is turning like, was this not, I thought this was day one i think i i think we talked about this on saucecast where didn't she say that like did i call her out for like hiring like a whole bunch of africans and shit to run her channel because she pays them like so so did i did i say this on the saucecast when we argued on that panel once i had um like a lot of my contractors didn't know like literally anything about video editing and we yeah. trained them and, the, and you had people, to train them these are people in third world countries yeah with no okay skills. okay i'm glad you brought that up because i'm gonna like, say you're hiring people in india to video edit which makes it even yeah. harder for the average person listening yeah. to make money video editing mm -hmm. so if you want to pay somebody like you know five bucks or 20 mm -hmm. bucks to edit a video mm -hmm. for the people listening at home no, that's even he, he, more no, difficult actually, for you the guy, the like you've known this has been happening the entire time You've known this has been happening the entire time. Why are you just now coming out and saying it? Sarah Garvey did answer this question, so I guess I'm just give you guys his retort earlier. Not for Destiny, but when you know he was questioned about this earlier, he essentially said, "Listen, right when I'm walking around being labeled as the angry black man and being called paranoid and being called a race baiter, I have to check that at the door. So even if my intuition is telling me that this person is not working in good faith, I have to check that until they show me that they're not working in good faith." And for him, the moment that he learned that Pearl was not working in good faith was when Pearl made the slave comment and saying that slavery was embellished. So I do understand that part, but I do understand as well that Destiny is 100% correct, right? Because it doesn't take you more than about three months to figure out who somebody is. Especially in a working relationship, it don't take you more so than three months to figure out somebody's character. Even in the clips he did show of him and Pearl's, I guess, one-on-one -on -one conversation, Bro, Pearl was saying some really problematic things. Like, you could probably use those particular clips of him and Pearl one-on-one -on -one and say, bro, like, she been telling you, who, like, who she was a long time ago. Like, you just is figuring this out right now. But I do understand, yo, listen, when you are getting an opportunity of a lifetime, Pearl got a million-plus subscribers, it's pretty much easy to turn a blind eye towards the little and tiny, tiny details. But once she just outright exposes herself, 
it's almost impossible now to just turn a blind eye and ignore it. I'll say this about every black guy that criticized Adam 22's interview with uh, Spencer, the one that we did with Spencer. If you came out and you were critical of that interview and you didn't watch it, you are a culture vulture. That is what you are. You are riding off of black plight, black culture, um, and you don't even know what the f you don't even care about it. You're just doing it to get views and clicks. I disagree in that regard because I don't believe that a black man who was criticizing the Richard Spencer thing, I don't think that he can be a culture vulture. As a matter of fact, I don't even think that an African-American black man can be a culture vulture in the culture. Because what a vulture is, a vulture is somebody who swoops in, takes your meal or take your assets and then swoop away, right? Once they have taken what they can take from you. If you're of the culture, you're born in a culture, right? You're still in a culture. Where are you going? <laughs> you're not going nowhere. Now, you can definitely call them a race baiter, a race pimp. But they're not culture vultures because they're of the culture and they are the culture and they are not going anywhere. And I think it's disgusting. OK, that's if you truly didn't like this shit. I thought it was always kind of weird and scummy. I'm pretty sure I called it out as soon as I saw it. Why the f couldn't you? It's your people. I don't know. That, I, I just I feel like it's super it's super cringe how like opportunistic all these people get around like the racial issues and shit. To be as good faith as possible, could it not be that there had always been a problem with it, but the Nick Fuentes thing was the last straw and he sort of recontextualizes how he sees what is going here? Why? The Nick Fuentes thing doesn't change anything. Whether she did or didn't have him on there, she openly, like, she openly brags about, like, paying, like, fucking, uh, like, Indonesian and fucking, um, is it in Nigerian? I don't remember if she said that. Like, poor, like, people to, and Indian people, I think, to, like, do some of her editing work and shit. She openly brags about it. I'm pretty yeah, but I don't think that anybody has an issue with her paying people in Nigeria or these third world countries a lesser fee than she would pay the U.S. editors over here. And they're working at a discount and getting things done. I don't think that anybody has an issue with that. And if you do, F you, get out of America. You're not American. You don't understand capitalism. If you have an issue with her paying people overseas at a lesser rate to get work done. And most people don't even have an issue with her inviting Nick Fuentes on. The issue is what came out of her own mouth in terms of slavery was an embellishment. Once you say that as a white person, we now understand what side of the fence you now reside. <laughs> we now understand, okay, <laughs> we know what side you stand on, right? What side you stand on. If you think that slavery is even capable of being over embellished, we now know what side you stand on. And that's what people are saying, right? That now they realize, okay, there were clues here, right? You know, there were bread bites leading me on the trail to the conclusion. But when Pearl said that, a big jet plane came in and flew me directly to the conclusion and hit me in the head. And now I realize, okay, Pearl is standing on that side. And because I'm standing on this side, we can't co-align or walk on the same path no more. I got to go my separate ways. And that's just why Sara Garvey is doing what he's doing. For sure. Like, she brags about that. Um, she's bragged about it on her YouTube shorts. I think I've seen it on a TikTok. I've seen it when I talked to her on that Adam show. Like, th like this behavior has been always there. Like, I don't know. What happened during that interview with Nick Fuentes was that she used an age-old tactic that colonizers use, which was a divide and rule tactic. She pitted African-Americans versus Africans when she spoke about how hard Africans work compared to how hard African-Americans work. Man, I want to be really careful because I don't know, blah, 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 you know, et cetera, all those standard caveats or whatever. But I've always been told from Africans and from African-Americans that Africans hate African Americans. Um, the idea that white people are the ones that do that, maybe I'm wrong, maybe the people that I've talked to have been biased or whatever, but almost every African that I've spoken to and almost every African American I've spoken to says that Africans fucking hate African Americans. I don't know if you need white people to pit them against each other, but I could be wrong. That's just, that's total anecdote. I am I know you guys don't know this sometimes, but I'm not black, I don't have that experience. Maybe it's not true, but yeah. We don't hate each other. What's going on is there's a third party that's brainwashing both sides. The same third party who would tell Africans before they even come to America. Yo, black Americans over there don't work hard. Yo, when you go over there, stay away from black Americans. The same third party that tells Africans over there to stay away from black Americans when they come here and how black Americans don't work hard is the same third party that's telling black Americans, yo, these Africans is coming over here to take your jobs. These Africans is coming over here to take your reparations. 
oh, these third Africans are, 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 are coming over here to cocoon and work with white supremacy to hold you down. That third party brainwashed both sides to think the other side is the enemy. So now when Africans get here, it's mayhem. Now it's World War III. Now we trying to figure out, yo, why do they hate me? Yo, why do they hate me? It turns out not. Nah, it was a third party feeding both of us counter opposing arguments to try to get us to fight each other. And she expressed to me that she wanted to do a new segment for her show. In that segment, she said that she would like me to present a topical new show on a day-to-day -day basis. So I said, okay, no problem. Talk to me. What are we talking about? And she said she would want me within her studio four days per week. I said, okay, from what time? She said from 10 in the morning till five o'clock in the evening. And I said, okay, well, that is seven hours. I said, so working four to five days a week for seven hours is essentially a day job. I said to her, okay, so what is my guaranteed fee at the end of the month? What is the salary? And she looks at me and she says, we do not do guarantees and we do not do salaries. So I said, so if you don't do guarantees and you don't do salaries, what is it that you actually do? And she said she does percentages. So I said, okay, cool. Well, what's the percentage? She said, Sarah, you're the high end. So you will get 70, 30. So I said, fine. Okay. Let me listen. 70% goes to me and 30% goes to you. Now she looked at me and she said, no. 70% goes to me. Oh, man. Pearl. Yikes. 30% goes to me, Sarah Garvey. And that's when I started scratching my head. And I said, hang on a minute. So are you telling me that's a high-end contract for you? And she said, yes. And I said, so are you saying that Just uh, Purdy Things Network has other people on low-end no, contracts? No. She said, yes. I said, King Riches and Auntie Jenny? She said, yes. I said, what's the low-end? She said it's 10 to 15%. So essentially, that's kind of wild. Could be owning <laughs> 10, um, sorry, 80% of the content, which is basically the monetized views on somebody's channel. That's girl boss and a little take home too hard. 15% of the money. She said, yes. I said, Pearl, how long are these contracts for? She said three years. Jeez. So, hey, this is just like, these are just like scam contracts. I don't know why uh, you would. Bell. I don't know any of this has to do with like colonialism. It's just, these are just scam contracts, you know? And this is when Abba tapped in to kind of give his take on things. And this is Abba and Destiny discussing the Just Pearly Things drama. Oh, we watched the, um, <laughs> the Just Pearly Things. Those are some uh, aggressive contracts that they're writing over there in the Just Pearly Things world. <laughs> 80 20 is crazy, bro. So, like, let, let, if I'm being generous, let's say, like, I got a business mind, okay? I, I always think of everything on the back end. Um, if she was on screen for the content, I would not mind that. The fact that she's nowhere on screen for the content makes it really fucking weird. Because yeah. I don't even know any MCMs nowadays who would ever offer contracts like that just for production on the back end. That's um, wild. Yeah. That's you, crazy. If you're going to rip somebody off that much, you're just paying them flat fees. <laughs> you're Absolutely. Not, yeah, you're never cutting anybody in on a contract. 80 20 in their favor like let me tell people there is no podcast space that is worth that kind of thing which i 100 percent agree if it's just a podcast space bro you can pay the standard rate of like a hundred bucks an hour or 120 or 140 dollars an hour to get a good podcast space and record your content you don't need to give up 80 percent of your content for what reason now i don't know maybe she's helping them with casting maybe she's also helping them with like everything social media related maybe she's helping them with everything and then maybe i could understand so i would have to look at the contract because like if you factor in all those things i could see the cost going up especially considering they're not big names mm -hmm. from a business standpoint she would just be operating at a huge loss if they never make it so i can understand wanting that return on investment that's if she does everything if she's just providing the podcast space doing the thumbnails and doing the editing like that's a no that's a hard no mm -hmm. um, and that's a big l for them but you know, if they want to sign those contracts, that's that's on them. How did you feel about them trying to cancel her for all the racial stuff? Um, I, so here's the thing. This happened a little bit to Adam as well. Um, I feel like it's super exploitative when 
there's black creators and they know some shit's been happening the whole time. And then as soon as like something weird happens, they come out like they're fucking Malcolm X and they're trying to save like all the other black people and they're doing the, everything they can for the culture. It feels really stupid and virtue signaling and weird to me. It happened with um, Adam recently where me and uh, Richard Spencer guy uh, had an interview on his show and a whole bunch of people got mad. He's like, oh, this guy used to be a white supremacist and this blah, 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 blah. But none of them even watched the interview. And that just, mm -hmm. it feels to me like you don't give a fuck. Like you're just here to like pick up, um, um, you're here to pick up, pick up virtue signal points. Points. Like, like pretending that you care about like black people and the struggle and blah blah blah. I don't know. That I, I feel super disingenuous to me. I don't like it. But um, I don't mind people getting mad about that. I just, you know, what's so crazy? Pearl got her whole career basically just shitting on black women all the time. Yeah. I, well, and, and that, I mean, that, that, that a lot of the red pill space, Kevin Samuels kind that, of. Nah, that's not fair, bro. Listen, Pearl has her issues. Pearl has her issues. Pearl has her faults, right? One of Pearl's fault is probably not being as informed as she can be, just repeating, regurgitating facts that she just heard from somebody else, still in talking points. But let's not put that on her, bro. Like, I don't think that Pearl come up is shitting on just black women, bro. I think that Pearl come up is shitting on modern quote unquote women. Us attaching a particular race to it is just not true. Now, she was having these conversations primarily with African Americans and black people. So, you know, so we could probably point to that saying, yo, she's having these discussions or these African Americans are kind of bringing their issues in their communities to her play and she's monetizing off it. But she wasn't shitting on black women particularly. That's, that's my point. <laughs> that's my, no, you know what though? Like Kevin was at least balanced with his shit. Like he wasn't always doing that. Like there was times where he's uplifting them or he's like showing love to them. He's, there's certain kinds of behaviors that he was really going after. Sure. But if you want to make the point that Kevin's in that basket, I don't care. I'm not. Sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with I you. Just, but I, I mean like I, there is a reason general, there is a reason why when he died like every black woman on Twitter was like guy. I'm glad he's gone. But yeah, go ahead. Fair. <clears throat> Fair. Uh, I'm Okay, but I'm not going to debate that now. Yeah, sure. My thing is, these guys said nothing the entire time. They were like, you know, showing it love. They said, fantastic, great, Pearl, do your thing. But like she used to have early videos where it's like she played on her race all the time. Whitest girl in the world yep. listens to rap for the first time. Or mm -hmm. like, whitest girl in the world discovers, I don't know, just name some rapper. You know, that. You know, it doesn't matter. She was just like, she would do that all the time. And now she starts to make a name for herself, just constantly changing her MO. And all of a sudden, she does this one interview, and everyone's like, "Wait, how does she feel about black?" People? Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, and and like the guys like talking about all these contracts. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, "Okay, well, why didn't you say anything at the time? Like, you didn't give a f Nigerians or Africans or anything. Like, you're you're pandering now because it's popular yeah. too. If anything, it's even worse that you knew about this for how long and you didn't Absolutely. say anything. Like, that's Absolutely. bullshit. Yeah, and that just triggers me. And it's yeah. especially irritating because I thought this was as soon as I heard about it because I remember talking to her about it on the Adam Sosnick show. I think I might have um, given her a little on Sneaker Show because she told me and she like, yeah, we hire out all of our people in like India and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? That sounds really oh. fucked up. Um, but labor. Huh? Chief labor. Yeah, it is. But like nobody cared until it was popular too because of the Fuente shit. And it was like, fuck you guys. We. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought I thought that approach to it was we got, I thought it was crazy. Like, oh, now you guys see something wrong with it? So mm -hmm. I, I didn't even really cover it because I think her biggest sin on that whole thing was basically just inviting this dude on and then just sitting there quietly like some fucking man Blood broken bitch you know what I mean? not like even sitting there quietly she was like laughing along with it it was pretty rough yeah yeah, yeah. like well, of course this girl man she hit me up i think it was like a year and a half ago to do uh, like a podcast she hit me up like i have one of the fastest growing podcasts check out this viral video and i always thought it was so weird that a white woman was coming around like doing exclusively mostly just interviews with black women telling them they're unreasonable and ridiculous mm -hmm. i'm like it's fine if you want to make that your mantra and your job, but like, why is it you're only talking to black women online? That was really weird to me. Yeah, it may be a little bit too peculiar, but I don't think we can come to the conclusion just yet, or at least we don't have enough information to come to the conclusion that Pearl has something against black women or, or she's discriminatory or she's prejudiced or she was attacking black women unfairly. I don't think we have enough data to really come to that conclusion, right? But y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think about this, man. And before you leave, Click on this other banger right here. Find out why toxic women are leaving women-only gym and going back to co-ed gyms, all right? It's your boy, Porter Flacco. Peace.